Ladies and gentlemen, regrettably, Annie will not be taking the stage tonight. She had every intention of being here with us, but due to bureaucratic red tape, she was unable to arrange her Russian exit visa with any assurance that she would be allowed back into the country where she is presently working on a time-sensitive book assignment. In a remote area in central Russia, unable to get us a proper video feed, she did, however, send us, just two days ago, a personal audio message. I'm so sad I can't be with you in person. I'd look forward to tonight. But due to Russia's Byzantine visa regime, I can't leave now. To do so would mean waiting weeks, if not months, to get permission to return. I'm being honored for a part of my life that is now in many respects over. For more than 30 years, I was a foreign correspondent, and it was a job I adored, but it also took its toll. I was gone from home, sometimes for months on end, sometimes for years. Increasingly, I was sent to war zones, and the wars became more dangerous for journalists trying to cover them. Increasingly, we became targets, valued as political pawns or for pure cash. The last war I covered was Iraq. I stayed much longer than I anticipated because I was horrified by the ignorance and arrogance with which the U.S. government pursued this policy. And the only way to find out what was really going on was to be there. The longer I was there, the more I knew and the more valuable my reporting. However, I too was arrogant and ignorant, not fully realizing what my job was doing to me. After more than six years, too many roadside bombs, too many kidnapping threats, and too many attacks on my Iraqi staff, I was pretty crazy. I managed to keep it together while I was there, but when I would come home for breaks, I jumped at loud noises. I had nightmares. I drank way too much. The same symptoms generally called PTSD that we see in so many soldiers coming home. I didn't want to admit that I was vulnerable, that I could no longer do what I loved and had become good at, but I had to. I've decided to return where I started, Russia, a place I know well, where I was a correspondent over many years starting in the late 70s. But this time, I have a contract to write a book. It's a huge gamble, and I'm not sure I can pull it off. This is a totally new adventure. Happily, I'm no longer being bombed or threatened, except by my own fear of failure. But that can be an inspiration, too. Here in Russia, people have had to reinvent themselves with the fall of communism. While many men were paralyzed by the earthquake, women took the lead to provide for their families. Buoyed by fear and hope, we can all reinvent ourselves. Tonight's award is also a real source of inspiration. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting on Annie Garrell's behalf, please welcome her husband, Vinton Lawrence. Annie's quite a person, and I would like to address all the husbands of strong women in this room. It's a challenge, but you're very, very lucky. Thank you very much.